Right. And I mean, you know? we saw uh, earlier on stream today when uh, Sage Hazard was fighting Devin, that was where the bombs were the most potent, was in those uh, ledge trapping situations. Yeah. And we've seen Stage Hazard has a wide repertoire of ledge trap situations. So, you know, it's going to be, if, if Stage Hazard can get those, uh, those setups, it could be could be rough for the buzz, but already we're seeing yeah. gravitational pull come through. <laughs> yeah, not not necessarily in order to deal with the bombs, but instead every other one of Samus's projectiles is just getting shut down with it. And here's where things can get interesting because Samus as a character kind of limited at the ledge. When she's the one who has to be getting back onto the stage, things can get really bad for her. Uh, that being said, when she's in control. Well, let's just see how far Stage Hazard is actually going to be able to take it. The Buzz using that uh, high vertical movement to get off the ledge there, but now finds himself at the other ledge. I really love the way that Stage Hazard places those bombs. He places one just at neutral get-up distance, and then one at roll distance, so that even if you dodge the first bomb, you're still getting hit by that second bomb and putting it in a, in a uh, uncomfortable position. <laughs> The wiggle, man. The fact that he managed to get past all of those hitboxes that the buzz was threatening. That being said, has not actually found a way to get back to neutral just quite yet. That was such a good... Nice. The fact that that missile managed to actually come out, that's what led to Stage Hammer come back to the ledge here. That's what let him get all of this damage that he's dishing out right now. The buzz is actually on the back foot. Seriously. All right, we're going to be getting, getting the buzz out of the situation. Stage Hazard stuck the ledge. Don't think he has his jump. Ooh, ooh makes it past the uh, ledge, but... Wait, where are you going? <laughs> okay, this... He's still alive somehow. <laughs> Great parry. Such a brilliant parry. And not only that, Luma's dead as a result, too. Meaning that Rosalina, her kill power is going to be that much nerfed. Mm -hmm. And that means Stage Hazard, you know, gets to live longer. Just kidding. I well, was going to talk about all the rage he was having, but... Yeah, and I, I really just want to compliment Stage Hazard on his ability to kill Luma. It's been very consistent throughout this game. But mm -hmm. now, once we're back here to the neutral, this is where the buzz shines. He is one of the best players in the world, especially when it comes to being in the neutral, figuring out his opponent's habits, and just developing game plans mid-set in order to figure out exactly what to do in order to shut down everything their opponent's trying to do. Luma at ledge, nice get-up attack, but Debus is ready with the, uh, the grab. Yeah, that's the thing Debus loves to do. Basically put the Luma in this juicy little, you know, just a target on its back, but that's exactly what he wants you to do. <laughs> poor little guy. Yeah. Nice. She is an unjust ruler. Again, yeah. I mean, it's, you're not going to get punished too badly, because, uh, you know, without Luma, Rosalina can't get things really that strong to punish. But nonetheless, we're seeing just how that little star being right at the ledge is such a difficult thing to actually get past. And there we go. Oh, this game, bringing it right back to even. Yeah, this game started off so good, so, so good for Stage Hazard. And the buzz has just adapted, man. Figured out where his winning positions are and committing to them, especially here at the ledge. This is just an absolute nightmare. What do you do? Oh, and the late hit of the Rosanair. Sage Hazard has taken all of his damage on, on this third stock just at this one ledge interaction alone. <laughs> he still can't get away. It just, the brutality continues. It just keeps going. 128 and uh, just, just like that, F that that final stock was just it was just the buzz that was rough that was, it was, that just, was, it was you know it felt like maybe the buzz was you know sort of needling and prodding his way seeing okay what are the weaknesses that you are you, know, you as a player have mm -hmm. you know the weaknesses that you as a you know also your character suffer from and then eventually he found it he's like oh i see if I just position myself exactly like this, this little Luma right at the ledge, and you trying to get up against it, you can't. It's, who oh boy, what a what a statement. That was just a, I don't know, multiple choice test, and then eventually yep. he, he bubbled in the right answer. <laughs> Stop battle. 
All right, and it looks like uh, FD is going to be uh, Sage Hazard's counter pick of choice. I did hear DeBuzz picking out the Alf. Interesting. Um, I can, I guess I can agree with this. That earlier part of the game felt like, I mean, you know, Sage hasn't had the lead for a long time. And a lot of the advantages that Rosa had, you know, with Luma, the fact that, you know, Luma body blocks projectiles, Pikmin do the same thing. And, uh, you know, I think with uh, Olimar, there's going to be, especially if the ledge trap is going to be his wing con, there's just a lot less variance with Olimar. He's not going to have to worry about, oh, I got him on the ledge, but Luma's dead. No, he's just always going to be keeping him here, always going to be doing horrible, horrible things to this poor man. Hey, Pikmin doing so much damage. Oh, rolling into the charge F smash. It's looking very rough for Stage Hazard right now. Yeah, and also another component is that because Olimar is so tiny, it's going to be that much harder for Samus to actually find openings. Generally, she kind of can struggle to hit short characters, especially once she takes to the air. Mm -hmm. yeah, this, this one purple Pikmin in particular is putting in so much work just not letting Sage Hazard play the video game. Ooh, all right, looking for some jab mix-ups. Get down, <laughs> Mr. President! Uh, a question, nice. are the electric Pikmin invulnerable? I believe they are. Does that are. mean that they eat the hit and don't take damage, or that it just goes through them? I think they eat the hit and don't take damage. Oh, they ignore. All right. And that's actually why we've seen the Buzz have zero yellow Pikmin. Because yellow Pikmin are actually a little bit of a liability. Oh my god. Dude. Just, yeah, just Ugh. take 55. Just take it. What else were you going to do? Oh my. It's the one purple. <laughs> what is that? That's all you need. The up being neutral. Are you kidding me? <laughs> it's, a, it's a good movement mix up. He's oh. taking 95. The buzz is just all over oh, him. All the slap noises, too. This one purple has been with him. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Even Stage Hazard wasn't ready for that to hit. I mean, he, he w it was really smart that he angled it upwards. I think yeah. that's maybe what threw DeBuzz for a little bit of a loop. But uh, also, if you're DeBuzz, you can run into forward smashes. He can run into like six more forward smashes and he'd still be in a winning position. Pretty good. Yeah. There we go. Tap the shield with the back air and then. Yeah. Punish any sort of counter attack. <laughs> yeah, I love that. But he, like, Stage has gets the shake of the head and he's just like, what do you want me to do? <laughs> <laughs> So that's definitely going to be uh, the buzz moving on in the winner's bracket. Yeah. Uh, looking really, really good tonight. There's a lot of hefty competition, though, so let's see if he's able to keep up with it. It it kind of felt like... Do you think he felt like he was forced to switch to the Olimar? Or that he just wanted to... It was more like he was just more comfortable doing so. I felt it was more of a comfort pick because I mean at the end of game one DeBuzz had all of the momentum in the world so I mean I don't think it I, I, I think Rosa I wanna, absolutely could have won game also two. can we go back to that last replay I really when it comes to these ledge plays there's so much to deconstruct here so he, he has so much of a lead but if we want to yeah the Notice this. He he comes in for this run, you know? Yeah, so he's like dashing back and forth here. And he goes this and he runs in right there and shields. He baited him. It's mm -hmm. the sort of thing where if you are, especially, you know, if your stage has and you're panicking, you need to get off that ledge. It's just this last dash in that basically baited him into doing that. You know what I mean? He's just dashing back and forth, and then he shield mm -hmm. stops. And that, like, tiny little bit of... And I think it's almost like the flicker of the shield is what triggered the ledge roll. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's hard to say exactly, but, I mean, just, when it comes to the ledge trapping and everything like that, there's an entire... It's, it looks like the buzz is just hitting him over and over again, you know? Mm -hmm. Just that it, it's an endless cycle of violence that's impossible to escape. Uh, but really, there's a lot that he's doing micro positioning tiny little baits in order to you know actually get his opponent to jump into the forward smash mm -hmm. 
And uh, we get to really appreciate those micro situations because of the wonderful equipment that House of 3000 provides. <laughs>